hide this one perfect hey guys unfortunately it's me again and the last couple of weeks i have been trying to figure out the best way to integrate this midi keyboard that i have right here into unreal engine and i found that it was quite a hassle and a lot of tutorials did not work for me so i thought that i was going to present you with another way how i went on and got the solution this tutorial is going to be a bit longer because it has sort of more layers, but we are going to start with integrating the MIDI keyboard into Unreal Engine. And in the end, we're going to make a, th a synthesizer and it is polyphone. So not just one note, but multiple notes. And also it will detect all of the other inputs as well. And the pitch, of course, and all of the others. All right, let's start. First of all, what you want to do is go to plugins and type in MIDI. MIDI device support is a must. You have to have it, so enable it. It will tell you to restart your computer if you want to. Uh, it will tell you to restart the engine. After you have enabled it, go, go ahead, create a new blueprint class and a new actor. I just call it MIDI keyboard controller search. And do not be intimidated by what you're seeing here. We're going we're gonna go through it step by step. First of all, you gotta find your MIDI controller. That is exactly what is happening here. So in the beginning, you wanna find all of your MIDI devices, put it into a loop for each element, uh, break it out, just say, break found MIDI devices, and then you get this note. This one is just by click, right clicking and set format text. There you go, and you have your format text. The way this one works is that you have your parentheses, your little brackets, where you can put in the value. For instance, this is the uh, device ID, and the other one is device name. And you get two inputs, and then it looks it just looks prettier on uh, on the on the print string. You just connect whatever you want to connect to this one and have a print string. So what this does right now is if we place this actor into the world, it will tell you all of the devices. If you look on the left up here, all of the devices that are available to your system. Oh, I should have I should have set the output to something a bit a little bit more longer. And as you can see, you got quite a lot let's put this on a two seconds but like 25 seconds there you go you got quite a lot of uh, of actors lm lk mk3 midi one and midi in two like device id one and two if you can see those are the ones that i'm going to use because those are the midi inputs so what we're going to do is after we know that is the device id one and two we are going on every, we're going to create this MIDI device on every event, t event tick. So event tick, do once, you can do it if you want to, it saves a bit of resources. Just drag it out, do once, set it in here. And then here's a, an important decision, create MIDI device controller. There is something called device input controller. Uh, you can use it, the difference is that if by chance it will not detect all of your buttons that you have down here. For instance, if I use device input controller, it doesn't know what to do with those knobs here and doesn't really know what to do with those drum pads over here and this pitch. So I, I would recommend against using device input controller, but recommend using create MIDI device controller. There is a significant difference between those two and this is going to be more interesting when we come to here. But after you have created this node, drag out and get an is valid. This question mark is valid and input it in here. This node checks if the, the inputs, the, the device ID input that you put in here, remember we said that one or two, one and two, so device input one and two, the ID is that the ones we're gonna use. This is sort of a trial and error. If two doesn't work, put in one. If one doesn't work, try zero maybe, but usually one or two will work if this one is valid put it into a variable this is very important put it into a variable you can do it in dragging out and say 
uh, promotes to variable and then there you go give it a name and that's all you actually have to do but if you do not, would not have put it into a variable the garbage collector will just delete it within 30 seconds so you'll pretty much doomed at that point put it into a variable and this one right here is just so that we see okay it's, it's cool or not i put it in green so if we hit play you see there is a green midi device controller number nine up on the left i should really put up those seconds to like 25 again there you go and play you see midi device controller number 10 it is counting up and it tells me it is a valid input and it does work in fact so this is just for our debugging all right now that we have set up our MIDI device controller with the correct ID and we know it is the correct ID and we saved it to a variable, drag out a pin and say bind event on MIDI event. All right, we wanna, we wanna have that node. This one right here, it's the exact same node. And this one will fire every time you do anything on your keyboard, anything on your keyboard. Drag an event out of Drag an event out of here and say add custom event. Of course, I want to connect this one to here. Add custom event. I named it something else, a media event, event zero. And this custom event will tell you everything you need to know, literally everything you need to know. Uh, this is where we end today. There you go. We're not going to be concerned about everything on the right, but this is where we're going to end today. Because now we can look at this one and see MIDI device controller is valid, is not valid. If it's not valid, don't do anything. But if it's value, then do whatever we say you should do. Um, we have to... Let's, let's just play. How about we just let it play? I am going to bypass this branch right here so that we fully see what is happening. So I dragged out an is valid and to a print text just for debugging purposes. And again, I have a format text on here, right click format text, this one. And I filled it with all of the information that I need. I have a timestamp, so I created a timestamp. I have a channel, so I created a channel. I have an event type, so I have an event type in here and I just connected everything in here so that I see whatever is coming through on my device. This will look like this. You see on the left the timestamp channel nine unknown ID zero velocity zero. This is all the information that Unreal Engine is getting from a keyboard. If I press a button, you see something changed very quickly, very quickly. And if I rotate on those knobs over here, something changes, something changes. No matter what button I press, something always changes. And this is exactly what we want and this is exactly the difference between create MIDI input device and create MIDI device because this uh, this knows everything that is happening this is not just knowing okay this is a keyboard and okay on, on keyboard event or on, on knob event this recognizes everything why is this important to us well because right now we can set up any events to any of those button presses for instance I said that I don't want to see every time there is nothing happening that's what I did here with this one, if the control ID is zero and the velocity is zero, then there's probably nothing happening. So don't show it to me. False. <laughs> and don't don't even print it. That has the result of it's not showing anything except for if I press something. And this is important to know as well, because if we have a closer look to what is happening here, I'm just pressing the same button all over again and press exit and we go onto our output log. This is where it's getting interesting because now you have to take note yourself. I just pressed a button and it was the channel eight, note ID seven, uh, 77 and did a velocity 71. Now you can play around with all of those settings. For example, I set out if we get the channel ID, this one right here. If you get the channel ID number eight, go ahead and do a code and then play a sound. I had those buttons up here, those drum pads up here at channel 10. If channel 10 is coming in, 
do whatever I say you have to do in here. Perfect. And that's what channel 10 is doing. Channel 16, channel 16 should be this play button. If I can show it right here, should be this play button up here and then do whatever you want to do. So you have full control over your MIDI, control, MIDI controller. And this is why I prefer to use create MIDI device controller and not MIDI device input controller because you literally see everything, everything that's happening. This is just a quick setup of how to get your MIDI controller working within Unreal Engine. So now that we have discussed how it principally works and how we can get values out of our MIDI keyboard, I think it is time that we discuss how to actually get sound out of our MIDI keyboard. I'm gonna split this video right here for people who are just interested in seeing how to input, how to get an input a signal from your MIDI device. And we're gonna see each other in the next video. If you have any suggestions on what to do or what I should cover next or any issues that you are uh, having with the MIDI device controller, do not hesitate and ask in the comments and check out my website and Patreon that are linked down below. Additionally, I don't think that I will put this code on my, on my Patreon, but I will include the sound files and, and the extended code, all of this on, on my Patreon. So if you're interested in seeing what I did here, you can definitely check out the next video and get this one on my Patreon page. Thank you for your attention and till the next time.